Welcome to all of you who suffer like me from gear acquisition syndrome. On this episode of Basement Gas, what we're going to be looking at is something very unique, but still has been on my shopping list for a while, and that is the Harley Benton classic range gold top single cut style guitar. My name is Jack, and I obviously have a serious case of gas. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer. Um, Harley Benton, as some of you may know, is the house brand by Thoman here in Germany. Um, big music distributor, they're only about an hour away from where I live. But by no means was this endorsed by Toman. I bought this guitar myself. Um, I wanted to actually try out a lower budget guitar. And for 115 euros, you're not going to get a much cheaper guitar. And so I wanted to try out one of theirs. And um, this is all funded and uh, endorsed <laughs> by myself. So to get that out of the way. So, as you can see, Harley Benton fingerboard. Um, fingerboard. I'm not sure what that means. Wrapped in the standard plastic. I can already see the, the gold finish. It's pretty nice. There's also like a magnet. Okay, it's awesome. Toman, stri Toman strings on it. Harley Benton label here. And first impression like I said, a matte finish. It's it's not light, but it's not heavy. It's not like a a 70s or a 60s kind of Gibson weight. Not even 80s. Not that kind of real thick, chunky style. It's got probably a bit of weight relief, but it's heavy, but not too heavy. So it's 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 good. Um, It comes out of the box almost tuned. So right off the bat, I've played this guitar for about five to ten minutes and held it, gone up and down the neck. My first impressions are, for 115 euros, I don't think you can get a better guitar. I'm actually really surprised at how this feels, how it plays, how it sounds. Now, in it, it just says open style humbuckers. So right there, if I were to change anything straight away, it might be the humbuckers. The neck one sounds actually really nice, a really warm traditional sound. Bridge one, not too impressed with. It's a bit too tinny. I mean, we'll listen to it later, but you'll get an idea of what it sounds like. The neck, it's got a satin neck, so that's really smooth, not gloss, 
Just a, a fine satin neck, which is really nice for playing. And the fretwork, I don't notice any jagged frets along the side. It feels really smooth. I think the fretwork is really good. I'm actually going to go up and down with a fret leveler or a, a fret measuring stick thingy and seeing if there are any high frets. From what I've played, I didn't hear any fret buzz or anything, so there might not be any. Now, on the website it says Clusen style um, uh, or uh, tuners. The first thing I noticed that one of them is a little bit off. Get rid of that smudge there. This one is, it's sort of a little bit leaning this way, so, you know, attention to detail. I wouldn't say that's a huge deal as long as it stays in tune. Not a, not a really big thing. Um, it has plastic covering on the pickups, which is fine. You get that on a lot of guitars. Um, but one thing I did notice that you can see a lot of, like, wood shavings and sort of, like, sand dust and, 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 uh, or sand dust on it and so on so well I don't know I don't think that's a big deal but you know it's 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 little things but like I said for 115 euros this thing is it's quite quite a gem quite a steal I would almost say so it's part of Harley Benton's traditional style so it's got a c-shaped neck which is quite chunky like you would see on an Epiphone traditional guitar or actually um, Gibson traditional line guitars, you know, that go back to the 50s. Um, like I said, it's got what they call two classic open humbuckers. No name, no brand, so it's probably just like stock pickups that they get from somewhere in Asia. I couldn't exactly find where they produce them, if it's in Indonesia or China. Um, it comes with just normal Harley Benton strings, 10 to 46s. They're fine. You're going to change strings anyway, so that's not a big deal. Um, 22 frets, trapezoid inlays like you get on any Gibson or um, Epiphone. And one thing that I would say is if it's part of their, their traditional range, um, why does it have this kind of a neck, almost like a recessed neck? Um, if you look at any Gibsons from the from the 50s or even 60s or 70s or 80s, you don't have that recessed neck. Um, this whole recessed neck thing is it's quite a, a modern style. You might just be able to see it there. Yeah. So anyway, it, that's I wouldn't necessarily say that's a traditional thing, but to tell you the truth, to get up to those high frets, I'm. I'm not a big stickler on that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, built exactly the way it was in the 50s or 60s. And anyway, people only see the front of the guitar anyway. So what, are there going to be audience members going around saying, Oh my god, it's a recessed neck. Not cool, man. I'm leaving the show. Anyway, it's got these, um, you know, traditional looking top hat um, knobs, which I always love. I love those kind of knobs. They're really cool looking, really vintage looking. Tunematic bridge, um, obviously three-way toggle. Feels actually... That actually feels really sturdy. I'm actually really surprised. It, it really... It gives a good solid click. Um, more than I've seen in more high-end guitars, so that's actually a bit of a surprise. This feels like it could really last a while. Yeah, it really, it does, it reflects really nicely. I mean, you can probably see that just in the light there. It gives off a really nice look. So, that's my first impression. Um, it feels, like I said, it's heavy, but not too heavy. So it, it, it has a nice sustain to it, but um, it's not something that will break your back after like a three hour show or a two hour show. But um, it, it feels weighty, which I like. I like a, a guitar that has a bit more bulk to it. But um, like I said, you don't want to uh, have that terrible back pain after a two-hour show. So I think this would be quite good. So let's plug it in, see how it actually sounds. That's the most important thing, and how it plays, of course. Oh, one last thing. Obviously on the headstock, you got the Harley Benton logo. 
and um, it's got sort of, I don't know, uh, I suppose they're trying to sort of, you know, imitate the Gibson, um, Gibson inlay on the top, you know, I mean, I think all brands kind of do that nowadays. The only thing I might also change is get rid of that HB truss rod cover, maybe um, get something a little bit more snazzy or... I wouldn't put Gibson there. That's not something I wrote, or the Les Paul logo, because that's, that's Gibson, but I don't know, something maybe like a surfer girl or something. Anyway, um, plug it in, let's check it out a little bit more. One very important thing when it comes to budget guitars, which are probably more directed to beginners, people who might be buying their very first guitar, is the setup, i.e. how does it play? You can probably imagine that somebody who's buying their very first guitar does not know how to adjust a bridge or to maybe file down a nut or to see how the frets actually feel or if there's a high fret. So I'm going to go ahead, see how the action is, see if there are any high frets, see how the intonation is, literally do a one over and to see if this guitar is set up accordingly so that a person who's just trying it out for the very first time, their very, very first guitar, that they're not going to have any problems with it. I find it kind of counterproductive if you're buying a cheap guitar but have to take it to a guitar tech and maybe invest another 100 or 200 euros, it's gonna cost more than the guitar maybe just to have it set up. So it's important that right out of the box, this thing is working. So let's have a look. So uh, right away, I can tell with this straight edge that the neck is not perfectly straight. There, there's a slight bow onto it, and it's, um, sorry, it's more sort of uh, a concave bow. So, meaning that, well, as you can probably tell, the neck is going like this kind of a shape. Now, that's not that big of a deal. The action, I feel, is a little bit high on the 12th fret. Let's, um, let's check to see if there are actually any high frets now. So um, using this Stumac um, fret measuring tool, I could tell that towards the, let's say, 17th, 19th fret, quite far up the neck, there are some high frets. It's nothing too bad, a little bit of rocking. It's nothing severe, plus up here, yeah, well, you might actually notice it, but it's something that could be rectified very quickly, but still, it's something that a beginner guitar will not necessarily know how to do. So, also, one minus point right there. What I'm also gonna check now is the intonation. I need to get a tuner. Now, if you ask me personally, if the intonation is a bit off, I think that's something that a beginner should be able to figure out. That's one of the first things that I actually learned how to do, except after obviously learning to string a guitar and tune it up, was actually how big intonation makes a difference. So let's see how this works out. OK, 
Okay, I checked the intonation and it passed with a four out of six. The low E string and the G string were a bit sharp. So you'd have to change the intonation a little bit on those two strings. Like I said, that shouldn't be a big deal. Otherwise, like I said, I think the action is a bit high. I don't know if one can see that, probably not. Just take my word for it. It's a bit high for my playing style. And I think for a beginner, it would probably be a bit high as well. So yes, it would need a setup. The frets would need to be you know, lowered down here. They'd need to be edged off. The neck, it looks a bit dirty up here. And one of the pearl inlays is also not great work. I'll take a photo of it. I'll show it here. Otherwise, the it has rolled, kind of rolled edges. Nothing, nothing special, but there are no hard fret ends or anything. But still, it would need a setup for a beginner to really be able to take advantage of it. Still, out of the box, it's playable. By no means is it a bad setup guitar. It just could be made better. But that's that's generally the case with a lot of guitars. I mean, I've gotten a Gibson custom shop and it needed a setup. So I guess it always just depends on quality control. You know, whether you're buying a 115 euro guitar or a, you know, 4,000 euro guitar, who knows? So what is the conclusion? Is this guitar worth 115 euros? Is it less? Is it more? I would say it's definitely worth 115 euros, if not more. This is a great guitar for beginners, for people who are just starting out, for novice players who are sort of maybe looking for something a little bit different. Maybe they've got a Strat and they want to try out a Les Paul style guitar, single cut guitar and also for experienced players. I would be more than happy standing on a stage using this guitar. If anything, if it's bad weather or I'm not too sure of the conditions, I'd probably prefer to take this guitar than one of my Gibson Custom Shop ones where I don't know if it's gonna be able to survive the evening. Now, I don't play death metal scenes and I'm not jumping off of stages and um, so I'm not really that worried about my guitars, but still, I would be very happy standing on stage with this. First of all, it looks amazing. Second of all, with maybe a couple of adjustments, maybe a couple of modifications, you could get this to be a really good guitar. I would change, like I said, the pickups maybe, the tuners, I'm always a stickler for um, locking tuners, so I would probably get one of those. And I actually checked the wiring, as you can see, 
it's not sort of like brand pots as well, but it's it's hand wired, it's hand soldered. You can definitely see that. No sort of um, printed circuit chips or anything like I've seen on Epiphones, for example. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So I wouldn't change the electronics, just the pickups. Like I said, neck feels fine. Intonation was a bit out. That's the one thing, but that's solved in a couple of minutes. And um, there was a bit of tuning stability problems. It could be the new strings, but I personally think it's the tuners. So, like I said, that would probably be the very first thing I would change. But otherwise, 115 euros. I mean, where are you going to get a guitar like this for 115 euros? Well, obviously, Toman, but I'm not trying to promote them. I'm just saying that this compared to some of the high-end guitars that I have or... Um, LTD, ESP guitars. This is really good. It really ranks up there. I'm happy with it. I can only recommend it. It's my suggest... It's, it gets my uh, seal of approval. I just need to buy a seal and I will approve it. So anyway, um, if you like this, if you found it useful, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll be doing more product reviews. Uh, guitar effects pedals, guitars, you know all this stuff. Of course you do. Anyway, for those who know and for those who don't, my name is Jack and I obviously still have a serious case of gold satin coated gas.